Hey guys, and welcome back for those that are coming back. And for those that are new here, my name is Laura. Welcome to this reading vlog. As I was editing this video, I noticed I didn't have an intro. So here we are. This is my mood reading vlog. So literally whatever I was in the mood for is what I read for this reading vlog. And I'm excited to share about these books with you because I have some really amazing reads in here. We have some five star reads in here, not one but two and it's crazy because I haven't had very many five star reads this year so to have two in this reading vlog I am so excited to talk with you guys about so the books that were included in this reading vlog that we will talk more about throughout are Assistant to the Villain, Shark Heart, and then we got into some graphic novels so these were my very first graphic novels that I have ever read in my entire life and those are Unfamiliar Volume 1 and pumpkin heads and I am so excited to talk with you guys. So let's jump back to when I first started reading. Good morning guys. As you could see I started assistant to the villain and I wanted to do an early update and tell you guys what I thought diving right into this book and like very early in the beginning just to kind of give you my thoughts and you know I know this book has so many mixed reviews there are so many people saying they dnf this book there are other people that are saying it's an easy five star so I obviously went into this very nervous because of the mixed reviews. I didn't know where I was going to be on the like spectrum of really not liking this book or really loving this book. So I wanted to give you an update early on just to kind of see my initial thoughts about this book. And I have to say, I'm enjoying it. I am really enjoying this book. I've only read, I've only read the prologue and chapter one. But what I want to say is this book has a sense of humor in it that is very, very particular. So I feel like if you read the back of the book here and you kind of like chuckle a little bit or you think it's like somewhat humorous and going to be entertaining, you might really like the book. But I feel like if you read the synopsis on the back here and you read the prologue and you don't think it's funny, you don't think it's humorous, it's not your kind of humor you don't you don't think it's funny at all you like can't see how it could be funny I don't think you're gonna like this book I will say that and I can see why a lot of people do DNF it because it is for like a very very specific type of person type of sense of humor and I think that's why it has such a specific audience and why so many reviews are so mixed because I am someone who likes this type of humor. So I feel like this book's audience is very, very, very specific. Like I said, again, if you read the synopsis here and you think it might be humorous or you read the prologue and you're like, you know, this could be quite funny because I feel like in this book, you can't take anything seriously. Like you cannot go into this book thinking it's a serious book. You have to go into this thinking like, this is like a humorous, supposed to be cozy fantasy, but like, I can see why people wouldn't think it would be cozy fantasy either because of like the heads hanging from the ceiling and like things like that. Like some people probably just can't find this cozy or humorous and that's okay. Like that that's people's opinions and like everyone has a different sense of humor. So whether you like this book or didn't like this book or haven't read it yet, I wanted to come on and tell you my initial thoughts because like I said, the reviews are just all over the place. So I'm excited to keep reading because I am someone that I think is going to enjoy this book a little more than other people. But I also wanted to say every single person that I have heard has listened to the audiobook has DNF'd or really, really, really disliked this book. So if you do want to pick this up, I would definitely say read the physical copy or like get the version on Kindle from Libby. So to give you guys like a little background on the story here, there is a girl named Evie and she has lost her job and her dad is sick with, what do they call it? A mystic illness? I think it was what they called it. Um, let me see. Yes, a mystic illness that plagued the kingdom. So her dad is sick, so he can't work. So her and her sister are left to kind of provide for her family and her mom has gone missing. So 
since Evie lost her job, she is looking for a new job and she goes to job fairs and things of that nature and she hasn't been able to find a job just yet. But anyway, she goes into a forest where she meets a villain. I'm not necessarily spoiling anything. This is actually in the prologue, how they meet. She meets him in the forest where he is being hunted by other people in the kingdom. And you know, the first time they even meet, it's just, it's a funny way in which they met and their banter is just kind of really funny. And I, I don't know, if you don't like the humor in this book, like I said, from the prologue, I really don't think this book is going to be for you. But anyway, their banter is really funny. And she is just like so shocked that this person that she found in the forest is the villain because it is not who she's expecting whatsoever. And as they're running from these guys, they are talking and it's just the banter and like the things they say and the way they say them. I think it's more of the way they say them. That is just really funny to me. And you get into chapter one. So they meet in the forest, you get into chapter one. And that is when Evie starts working for the villain. And it's just... I'm just really enjoying it and I want to say prefacing me you know sharing more of my thoughts that I do not know who this author is. I looked her up after hearing a book talker wrote this book. I have not really looked at any of her book talk things and when I did look at her account I didn't necessarily think her videos were funny so that even like further reassured me that I thought I would be on the side of not really enjoying this book but here I am really enjoying it. Like I said, this book is going to be either a hit or a miss for a lot of people. And right now it's a hit for me. Again, I'm curious to see what I think as I continue on into the book, but it's a really fun book for me. Like I said, Evie starts working for the villain. She becomes his personal assistant and it's just, it's a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to continuing and I will keep you guys updated as I go, but I just wanted to give you a quick update and let you guys know what I'm thinking right off the bat because I do really believe that you are going to be able to tell when you first jump into this book, whether it's going to be a complete hit or a complete miss for you just based on the, you know, the synopsis in the prologue. So I wanted to tell you guys that. So anyway, I'm going to continue reading and I will be back here to update you guys as I go. I'm excited to, you know, let you guys know what I continue to think of the book, but I will see you guys soon. Alrighty guys, it is two or three days later at this point. I don't know if you can tell from my voice, but I had a cold. I'm still getting over it and Grace has a cold. So between taking care of myself and taking care of Grace, you know, it was just very hectic and I had very little time in general to let alone read and record. But anyway, I did end up finishing Assistant to the Villain and I did continue to really enjoy this book. I do have to say that this book does end on a cliffhanger. So if you are someone who does not like cliffhangers, you might want to wait till the second book is out, but obviously no promising that the second book won't end on the cliffhanger as well, because I do know that there is a third book coming out as well. It's already on Goodreads, so it does end on a cliffhanger. Alrighty guys, editing Laura here because a video of mine had gotten deleted and I realized I didn't give you a good synopsis of what's going on in the book whatsoever. So we have Evie, as I explained, she is the assistant to the villain and her father has what they call a mystical illness and this has taken over some people in the town and you know he is at home sick so evie is providing for their family while her sister goes to school and she took the job from the villain because she got let go of her previous job and obviously she needs to provide for her family so she took that job i love seeing how evie and the villain's relationship develops over time i think it's super cute and i absolutely adored it and i just thought it was super fun but anyway, what's going on here is Evie and the villain are trying to find who the traitor is. And what I mean by that is someone is giving away information of the villain to the people of the kingdom. So, you know, it, it's, it's really fun to watch them try to figure it out. There's like little things that go on in between all of the, you know, trying to figure out who the traitor is. And I just absolutely adored my time in this book. I always felt like there was something going on and I love that about the book. I have to say my favorite character in this book is Kingsley. 
If you haven't read the book, Kingsley is a frog who wears a crown and holds up these little signs. And he, I just absolutely adore him. So whenever there is like something that's going to go wrong, he will hold up a sign. Sometimes they say trouble. Sometimes they say help. There was one time where the villain was like having a hard time getting words out. And he held up a sign that said speak. And I just think he's funny. I was chuckling so hard at him. And I just... I just really loved this book and I have to say I did enjoy a lot of the characters and their relationships and like like I said I really enjoy the humor in this book but I can see why it might be a miss for a lot of people because I do think there is a specific audience and I know I see that a lot in this video but I want to make that clear. So that is what is going on. They are looking, the main objective is to look for the traitor, but there's just, there's things that's popping up all the time and it's just, it's a lot of fun. But anyway, I wanted to throw that in there just to give you guys like a kind of idea because I know later I do talk about a traitor and you guys are probably like, what is she talking about? So just a very, very quick little rundown of what went down in the book. So there it is and we will continue. I also wanted to say that I did know the plot twist as to like who the traitor was going into the book. I don't think I mentioned that. Someone did end up spoiling it for me. So that kind of like affected my reading in a way like I knew who it was the whole time. Now if I didn't know who it was, I don't think I would have been able to guess who the traitor was because you know, it was, it was just done really well. I thought it was a really good plot twist. I think it was done really, really well. But anyway, that was ruined for me. So I think that had a little bit of an effect on my reading as well. But it didn't take away from how much I enjoyed the book. But anyway, I'm going to stick with, I think this book is for a specific audience who enjoys this kind of humor. I was trying to describe this book to my husband. And I would have to say, for me, my personal opinion, people won't agree with me, but that's okay. This to me is like a cozy fantasy. This is a fantasy that like, when I think cozy fantasy, this is what I think of. And like with the graphics and like some of the details of the manner and like things that happen later on in the book, people would not consider this cozy whatsoever. But to me, this is a cozier fantasy just because of the humor and I didn't take anything very seriously in this book. So that is why I, I myself consider it a cozy fantasy for myself. So I did want to mention that I did love seeing Evie and the villain's relationship continue to develop. I can't wait to see what happens in the second book. I will be picking it up because I am very intrigued. I want to know what happens. And again, I did enjoy the humor in the book. But again, this was a four star read for me. There were points in the book where there was dialogue that I thought was just a little bit cringeworthy. But again, it was a four star read. I really enjoyed it. But anyway, I finished this one up last night and I actually started a new book. And this book I actually heard about from Gabby over on Gabby Reads. And I also heard about it from Jamie over at Jamie's Library. They both did a video that I watched both of their videos yesterday. And they talked about this book and said such phenomenal things. So as soon as I got done assistant to the villain, Dave ran out and grabbed it for me. I told him what book it was and you know where it was in the Barnes and Noble since I have a cold and I was taking care of Grace. So he went out and ran and grabbed it for me. And that is Shark Heart by Emily Haybeck. And I did start this this morning and I am on page 61. You can see it there. And I have to say the writing style of this book is so unique. There's not like chapter one, chapter two. There are scenes and like little excerpts and I'm trying to show you. Hold on one second. So there are pages and like the writing is like short on some pages. I'll show you as you can see there. So there are two pages and like the chapters are really short that have like the months written on them. Some are really, really short. Like it's just the writing style is just absolutely wonderful how it's broken up. It's it's a really, really fast read and I love that about it. This book is about a couple who was very recently married. They're in their first year of marriage and their names are Ren and Lewis. And I love how they like describe the characters. So you see Ren as someone who's very structured, very organized, very, you know, they tell you that she has like lists for everything and like she tries to help Lewis organize things. And then you have Lewis who is very into arts and acting and, you know, things of that nature. And he leaves art all around and, you know, and that is how they like describe these characters. And I really, really, really enjoy it. And even in the book, it says there are times where they compliment each other so well. And then there are times where they just, you know, don't get along. And it's, it's like, 
couples in real life you know and like I feel like Emily does such a good job of getting you connected to these characters like right away there are scenes in this book where it's past them and then you're in the present and then you're in the past and then you're in the present and it's it's so nice to see their backgrounds and like why they think the way they think why they do what they do and it just has you thinking about your own life and like you know are you living your life to the fullest because what ends up happening is Lewis gets diagnosed with an illness and I don't even I'm not even going to try to pronounce the illness he's diagnosed with but in here he, when he meets with his dad his dad calls it they call it animal dementia and what ends up happening is the person slowly turns into an animal over time and it's kind of really strange to see it happening in the book and like hear what's going on like there are parts of it where I was like it's so strange but and it, it, it it is it's so weird but the way the story is told it just ends up working out like I, I'm just absolutely in love with the story already and I can't wait to continue to read it but anyway he is turning into a great white shark and you just see all of their thoughts and like everything that has shaped them to be who they are and then you know you see Lewis and Ren and like how they're dealing with the diagnosis and it's just it's so unique this story is so unique but anyway i am going to continue reading this i will take you guys along with me and now since i'm feeling a bit better i'm hoping to keep you guys updated as i go a little bit more so let's jump right back into this book again i am absolutely loving it i am so curious to see where it goes and how it continues to develop i am absolutely loving the writing style it is so unique guys so unique. So let's continue with this and get back into it. Another day, another update. I am continuing to read Shark Heart. I am not very far along. I told you guys I was sick. Grace is like getting over it and now Dave actually has it. So there's just been a lot going on. I am currently on page 155, so literally not much further than when I updated you guys before, but I am continuing to absolutely love this book. How the author portrays love and loss is just, it's phenomenal and it explores it in so many different ways and in so many different scenarios and it's just absolutely beautiful. I am in love. And I did want to share a little excerpt with you guys that I read earlier. And it's not necessarily a spoiler because we all know Lewis is turning into a shark over time in this book. And I did tell you early on, like he did like art and acting and things like that. So this is a part of the book. Again, it's not necessarily a spoiler and I thought the writing was just so beautiful. So I wanted to share it with you. All right, here we go. And this is from Lewis. So here it is. It says, goodbye to continents and Shakespeare. Goodbye to bed and sleeping with both eyes closed. Goodbye to holding hands and bare feet in soft grass. Goodbye to the roads, paths, trails, and I-40 West, which have all carried me to here and this. Are we all just actors performing some unbound art form for God, the audience of space? I wish I could have seen then what I know now. All along, I had the starring role. The writing in this is just so beautiful. And it, again, it really makes you think about your own life and like how you're living. And, you know, I really love those types of books. And that is one, just one of the many reasons that I absolutely adore this book. It is just, it's absolutely amazing. And seeing how Ren is dealing with all of this going on. And another thing that I really loved was seeing, you know, like I said, seeing Ren dealing with all this, but how she deals with it would technically be like out of character for her because she's so organized. She always has this plan. And you know, some things you just can't plan for and you never know how you're going to react until it actually happens. And I, I'm just, like I said, I am adoring this book. I'm going to say now that I am predicting this to be a five-star read for me because, because I am having such a hard time putting this book down. I know I need to because of, you know, the sickness going on here, but I am having such a hard time putting this down. And when I am in this, I am a hundred percent invested and it is just tugging at my heartstrings and making me feel things and think things. And like, you know, when a book does that, it's just, oh, 
I feel like there's it's just such a unique book like I feel like there are just no words to describe how much I'm truly enjoying this book you can see I'm getting like tongue-tied even talking about it so I am gonna continue to read this and of course I will keep you guys updated right now Lewis is still transforming but he is like in the final stages of transforming and Ren has been given like a time frame and you know it's just it's sad it's heart-wrenching and I I guarantee you I haven't even gotten to the parts that are even more emotionally tied in here and I am already like so invested I'm going to be devastated and so many emotions but again I will keep you guys updated and I'm going to jump back into this book Alrighty, guys here we are I ended up finishing Shark Heart last night and I have to say, I am so glad Gabby at Gabby Reads and Jamie at Jamie's Library mentioned this book in their videos because if they hadn't, I probably wouldn't have picked it up. And it was a five-star read for me, which says a lot for me because I don't have very many five-star reads at all this year. So anyway, like I said, we were following Ren and Lewis, and I know I mentioned, you know, they're in their first year of marriage. Lewis is turning into a great white shark, but I do want to kind of tell you a little bit more because I know I was like hit or miss with updating since all of us were sick here, but we see Ren and Lewis, like I said, and we see the transformation going on, but we also see a lot more. So we are going back and forth between present day Ren and then past Ren and like getting her childhood and things of that nature, but not getting too much. In this book, in the very beginning, Ren mentions her mother often, but you never really find out what happened to her mother until a good decent way through the book. And then it all makes sense, like why Ren is the way she is and, you know, seeing the things that happened to Ren and how she's like hesitant to develop feelings and relationships and this like, I don't know, more to herself. It makes sense. But anyway, we do see Ren, like I said, in childhood. She brings up her mom sometimes. And then we actually get to see Angela and Angela's childhood and, you know, how things played out for her. Angela is Ren's mom. And I absolutely love that part of the book. It's just, it's amazing. We see Angela, we see her mom and dad, which would be Ren's grandparents. We see how they are with Angela and it's just like, it's, it's kind of sad. Like they are not really in her life very much. There's no one being like, how are you? Like what's going on? Like there's no one that really cares all too much and she just kind of feels alone to be honest. And then you see Angela meet a boy and she ends up pregnant with Ren. This is not, this, this is like in no way spoilers. It's literally in the synopsis. She ends up pregnant with Ren at 15 years old and the man that got her pregnant, you know, they continue a relationship, but he ends up being abusive in the relationship. And it is just, this book will rip your heart out and put it back together so many times. It's absolutely insane. And then with Ren, you also see some relationships that she had going on as well. So you see Ren in a relationship with a girl from college. And then you also see Ren befriend a woman who is pregnant with two birds. And I know that sounds insane. It sounds absolutely insane. But the way this book is written, it just works. It just works. And the way this book presents love, loss, and family it is just so beautiful. I highly, highly, highly recommend picking up this book. And actually, the Goodreads nominees for this year for the best books in the categories just ended up coming out yesterday. And this is on there twice. It's on there for the general fiction category and it's on there for debut. And I am gonna vote for this book in both categories. It is, I'm telling you, it is absolutely phenomenal. Again, if it seems at all interesting to you, I know it sounds weird. I know it sounds weird, but pick it up if it at all seems interesting to you because it is a phenomenal read. So there is that one. What I'm thinking of doing now is jumping into some graphic novels because 
that is just what I'm in the mood for. And with this vlog being a mood reading vlog, I figured I would do what I was in the mood for. And I know I don't see a lot of people talk about graphic novels very often. And this is actually my very, very, very first graphic novel. And I am so excited to jump into the ones I have. So the graphic novel I am actually going to be jumping into now is called Unfamiliar. And you can see it there. It is by Haley Newsom and... Like I said, I'm excited to jump into graphic novels. This is my first one, so we're gonna see how it goes, but I did get a bunch of different graphic novels literally yesterday. So let's see how it goes, but I did end up, you know, just doing a little flip through of this book. I'll give you guys a little, but you can see all the graphics here. The illustrations are beautiful and it screams fall. With fall coming to an end so quickly, I figured I would jump into this one. I do have another fall one. Maybe I will read that before this vlog ends. But, and even the color palette is just like, it screams fall. There are oranges, pinks, purples, blacks, greens. There's, there's a whole bunch of colors, but like, hold on, let's see. The illustrations are just so, but you can see the ghosts there. And this one is about a kitchen witch and she ends up moving. So she moves to the new house and it is haunted. So she is trying to figure out how to deal with this haunted house. And that is like as much as I know about this book. So we shall see how this goes. I'm excited to, you know, jump into it and see what I think. Oh my gosh, this page screams Halloween. Hold on. It gives all the Halloween vibes. Look at those colors. So I'm excited to jump into it. So that is what I am going to do now. And with this one, I will probably just update you guys when I am done. Alrighty guys, it is a couple hours later and the kids are still sleeping, which is crazy. It is crazy. And I have finished Unfamiliar and this is volume one. And it leaves off on like not finishing up the stories, which makes sense because this is a series and I am absolutely loving it. This is my first ever graphic novel. And I have to say, I had the best time reading this. It was so cute, it was so much fun. I needed to keep reading because I needed to know what was happening. There are little stories throughout this. So it's not only about Planchet and the haunted house that she moves into. She finds friends in the new town she moved into along the way and they each have their own stories and then there are other connected stories as well and I am absolutely loving it. There does feel like there's a lot going on but it is just such a fun read. I absolutely adored it. So the four main characters we have in here are Planchet, who you see here. She's the main person we follow in this story, the one who moved the kitchen witch. And then we have Pinion, who is the first character we meet. And then we have Sun and Babs. And all four of them, like I said, have their own stories. I am glad I read this, you know, fall going into winter. I still, it's still fall, but you know, we're going into winter so fast here, but I'm so glad I read this now. It would have been even better to read during Halloween. And I love this so much that I will probably pick this up next Halloween and reread it. I love this. I I think this was the perfect start in graphic novels for me. As you can tell, I, I just, I adored this story. I already ordered volume two and I'm excited to continue with these. These are ones that I am definitely going to continue with and it was just a lot of fun. These characters do have little animals. Each one of them has their own and they are called familiars and it is just, it's a fun time. It is a really fun time. So anyway, that is this one. I am not going to give it a star rating yet. I am gonna wait since this was my first graphic novel. 
I'm gonna wait until my monthly reading wrap up and then rate it star wise. And I'm sorry, I know you guys are probably disappointed about that, but you can see how much I absolutely adore this book. I have a feeling I know what this is going to be, but I wanna continue reading graphic novels to just kind of get a baseline for, you know, how they make me feel, what I'm gonna rate each one and like how to rate them. So I did absolutely adore this and I wanted to, you know, just come on here and tell you guys I had finished it and my thoughts and opinions. I, I, I loved it. I really loved it. Anyway, I am going to read one more graphic novel for this video because obviously I had such an amazing time reading this one. I'm like, I want to keep going and I don't have volume two currently. Like I said, I ordered it. But anyway, we're gonna keep going with the fall vibes for graphic novels. And this one I have also only heard phenomenal things. And everybody that has liked Unfamiliar with the like wholesome, like witchy vibes, fall vibes has also really enjoyed this one. And this one is called Pumpkin Heads by Rainbow Rao and Faith Erin Hicks. And here is that. And I will do a quick little skim through so you can see the illustrations here. And it is just stunning. And you can see all the colors give like fall vibes. And it does have this cute little map in the beginning here. So this one is about two friends who work at this pumpkin patch together. And I do believe it takes place on Halloween night. I haven't read, you know, a synopsis or anything like that. I'm just gonna jump into it like I do everything else. So there is that one. I am excited to jump into this one again. Have heard nothing but amazing things and I am so ready for another graphic novel. Now I'm hoping hoping to pick this one up when the kids go down for a nap today. They have been napping around the same time in the afternoons. So I'm hoping that stays with them being sick. It has been quite off, but I'm hoping that stays so I can jump into this one this afternoon and get this one started again. I am super excited and I cannot wait to jump into it. So this one will hopefully be started this afternoon. Alrighty guys, so I did end up finishing Pumpkin Heads. I read half of it when the kids went down for a nap yesterday and then I read the other half right before bed. I literally finished it and then went to bed. So anyway, this book follows Deja and Josiah. They are seniors and they work at this pumpkin patch. So every year they have worked at this pumpkin patch. They've gone back every single year and worked together. And this is their last year because next year they are going to be away at college and obviously won't be back to work it. So you see them going through like all the feelings and emotions of this being their last Halloween at this pumpkin patch. And it's just, it's really heartwarming and this book gives all of the fall vibes. It's amazing. At one point, I felt like I could smell all of the fall scents and the art in this is just absolutely phenomenal. That gives all the fall vibes as well. I really love that you have two characters, one who's a rule follower, like to a T, and the other one who like goes out on the whim and has like an enjoyable time. I really, really, really enjoy this book. One thing I do have to say was that the plot, it kind of just wasn't for me but it was still a very quick enjoyable read this is one i do still think i will pick up every fall or every halloween and i know i said that with the last one too they are just such quick easy fun reads and i am so enjoying reading graphic novels like you have no idea like i am now obsessed with graphic novels but again this is only my second one so i'm curious to see how i feel going more into them i did decide to rate these now I'm just writing them based on my enjoyment and how I like the art style and things of that nature. But I would say I would give this one a 3.5 just because like I said, the plot really wasn't for me, but I did still have a really fun, enjoyable time and I can see myself picking it up in the future. And then as far as unfamiliar goes, because I know I said I wasn't gonna rate that one, I'm gonna actually give that one a five star. I'm gonna give that one a five star because the amount of joy and like just my reading experience with that one was just 
through the roof. I had such an amazing time reading that one that I am going to give it a five star. And like, I immediately finished that book and went and ordered the second one. And the second one is actually going to be here today. And as soon as that one comes through this door, I am jumping into it. There was just so many cute little stories going on within the bigger story. And I just, I loved it. It was so adorable. So I'm going to give, like I said, that one five stars, this one 3.5. And I can definitely, definitely, definitely see myself picking these up yearly to read around fall slash Halloween. So I just wanted to, you know, tell you guys that. And I am looking forward to jumping into so many more graphic novels. If you haven't jumped into one, definitely give it a try. It's just, it's so fun. It's a change of pace. And sometimes jumping into book after book of reading prose and things like that, it can get like a little overwhelming slash you can be in a reading slump. And I think these are awesome for getting yourself out of a reading slump because they are so quick and easy. But anyway, that's it for this reading vlog, guys. Thank you so much for sticking with me for this reading vlog. I truly appreciate it. I hope you guys had a good time. Thanks again, guys. I really, really, really appreciate each and every single one of you. If you like this video, make sure to give it that thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button. I try to do reading vlogs often. I want to do more content on graphic novels now that I know I really, really enjoy them. So if you want to see more bookish related videos, make sure to stick around. I would absolutely love to have each and every single one of you. And thanks again, guys. I will see you soon.